Hey Robot Makers, in this video I want to show you how to make a rack and pinion system using Fusion 360. This is ideal for if you want to convert rotational energy into a linear motion. Okay, let's get started. So I'm over here in Fusion 360, what I'm going to do is create a new sketch and then I'm going to create this on the, the top face. I press C for circle and I'm going to make this 18 and a half. That's the outer diameter that I want my gear to be within. So let's see what options we have for this. I'm just going to make that construction line. Okay, so if we now go over to utilities and click on the add-ins and then scripts and add-ins, there's a really useful thing that's called spur gear. Now the bottom one, if we click on that, we can see this is a Python program. I think there's another version, which is the C++ one. I'm just going to go for the Python one. I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever with what we're doing here, but I'm going to press the run button there. And what we will then get is this little dialog box over here. We've got a whole bunch of different options that we need to select. So what I want to be able to do is specify the absolute outer diameter of my gear that it fits within. I know that it's got 10 teeth, so I can come along over here and type 10 in the number of teeth. But this module, I need to understand what that needs to be. Now I could look at the uh, bottom pitch diameter down here. The pitch diameter isn't the outer diameter. That's the, you can see there, the pitch diameter is this kind of middle circle. And what we're we're really wanting to do is have an external perimeter defined rather than this pitch diameter so let's have a look how we might do that so over here in Excel I've just created a little sheet that can help us do some of the little formulas these are really simple formulas uh, but I just wanted to show you how we could do this so the pitch diameter is actually the module times the number of teeth but what if we want to understand what module do we want let's work backwards from that so the module is actually this outer diameter divided by the number of teeth plus two so if we know what the number of teeth are, we know what our outer diameter is, which is 18 and a half. That gives us a module of 1.54. So if we go back over to Fusion 360 and let's type in 1.54 as our module. Now it's saying there that the center hole is too large. We just need to change that center hole to be three millimeters, for example. Let's make the gear thickness three. And this root fillet also needs to be under 0.9 so let's just change that to 0.9 so we can see there the pitch diameter is 15.4 let's go back to our spreadsheet and have a quick look there 15.4 15.4 is this diameter this pitch diameter let's just rename that to pitch diameter so that we can see that so that's correct and our outer diameter is still 18.5 so this pitch diameter is the outer diameter kind of minus two teeth if you like okay so let's go back to fusion 360 let's uh click OK. All those options are good. And if we now look, we have a tooth which fits perfectly within that circle. OK, so typically what you would want to do next to do the rack piece is we want to copy this profile, but at the moment the tooth isn't oriented very well for us to do that. So we need to rotate this body. So if we open this spur gear, we go to the body and now that we've got that selected, we can press M for move. And if we go up here to the rotate, we can select the axis we want to rotate it on. And then we're free to rotate this round. But how do we know what the exact angle is that we want to rotate this round? Well, it's going to be a function of how many tooth we've got. So let's go over here and just add an extra little thing. So the rotation, rotation angle is going to be 360 degrees divided by the number of teeth that we have and then divide that whole by two. So 18 degrees is what we need to rotate it by. So let's go back to our model. Let's type in 18 degrees. We can now see that we've got these two top and bottom teeth perfectly aligned. The next thing we want to do is we want to copy this entire cog and bring that down by the pitch diameter. So let's do that. Let's click on that. Press M again to copy. This time we're going to do a translate. And if we remember what the pitch diameter was, if we go back to our sheet there. So the pitch diameter is 15.4. So if we move this now in the, let's try the Y axis, minus 15.4. So we want to actually make a copy of this. And you can see there, because we've moved it down by the pitch diameter, those teeth are overlapping, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to click OK. We can now hide that original body. And all we want to do next is create a new sketch and just copy this profile. So let's do that. So we're going to go back to solid, click on create new sketch. I'm just going to do it on the top of this surface here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I press P to project and we can project individual lines. If I hover there and just select, you can just see it's in black there. 
that line we'll do the same with the top the same with the side same with that little piece and then that last little curve let's just do those two on the other side as well and i'll click ok and i hide that body you can see that we've got the actual outline of that profile i'm just going to do l for line and just do a line between those two points there and if we hover over that you can now see that we've got a profile that's enclosed so this this shape here is a really interesting curve and that's actually an involute curve so i'm just going to click finish sketch do e for extrude i'm going to extrude this tooth out by say three millimeters and let's just go back to the bodies so that we can select that so let's just go back to our tooth there and see that kind of in 3d so that's one tooth now typically we want to have many teeth in the rack we don't tend to have just one so what we need to do is we need to replicate that but before we do that Let's go back into that sketch and let's define how long is this rack going to be. So I'm going to do a rectangle. I'm going to start there. I'm going to drag this out. I want this to be about three millimeters high and then say 190 millimeters long. So it's going to be quite long, skinny rack there there we go that's what it's going to look like in its entirety so now that we've got that that can help us when we're actually calculating how many teeth we need so let's now go to finish that sketch so we need to extrude that sketch so i'm going to go to the sketch that we've just created which is the sketch number four there and i'm going to extrude this out by three millimeters like so i'm doing this as a separate operation so that we can actually replicate that tooth along so now that we need to do is go to create pattern rectangular pattern and we want to find the feature that we created before so let's go to features and let's find that tooth that we created originally and then the axis is going to be along along this direction if we now start pulling this out you'll see that we get get some teeth and we, we need to have a certain number of teeth but what should the spacing be between the teeth let's just go to a different view and see the distance between the teeth is quite an important calculation so let's go back to our spreadsheet and see what this distance between the teeth should be so it's actually the pitch diameter times pi divided by the number of teeth so i've got a little calculation there which does exactly that so it's looking at this pitch diameter which we have just there 15.4 times by pi and then divide the whole of that by the number of teeth the number that we've got there is 4.84 so 4.84 is the number that we need to type into that dialog box if we go back over there uh, we need to go to the spacing and the spacing needs to be 4.84 4.84 so that gives us the correct spacing between the teeth, but how many teeth do we need? Well, we can actually eyeball this quite easily. So we know it's going to be at least double that. So let's go for 20 teeth. Oh, it's probably going to be more like 30 or 40 teeth. Let's try 40 teeth. You can see that's just one more than we need. So let's just go to 39. That looks about right for that length. There we go. Now, currently all these teeth are not connected to our hole. So what we can do is we can select everything. We can click on the combine and then we can just make sure that that's a join operation and click OK. And we've now just got the one body just there. That one that we hidden, that was the original, original spur gear. Right. So now to check that these actually match, let's enable that body of that original one. And then we're going to rotate it back by 18 degrees to see that it actually fits OK. So let's click on that press M, go to our rotation, select that middle piece there, and then we're going to rotate it by, it doesn't matter which tooth we select on there, 18 degrees, and we want that to be body. Let's click OK, let's zoom in, and we can see there, that looks like a perfect kind of mesh between the teeth, so that's going to work just right. So we can now print out these pieces, and that will work just the way we expect it to. So I hope that helps you. I've often found that this dialog box is a little bit confusing, particularly when you want to specify the outer diameter rather than having to calculate what the pitch diameter is from these, uh, these numbers and also trying to figure out what that module is. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.